Guys, welcome to Kingfisher's Trace Clinic. Don't forget to like our video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon. Ting, 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 ting. Today, I'm going to be doing our dangles. Kingfisher, we sell three different variations of dangles. That's the saltwater sports ones. Today, I'm going to be doing these two first. What we require is trusty side cutters, some quarter crimping pliers, some heat shrink, our number one, and this is important, our number one mustard double crimp, okay? A uh, 100 pound carbon coated wire, I've taken it out the packaging, it just makes life easier. Okay, so all we want to do is take a big piece of wire. I'm just going to cut it over here. The longer you make it, the easier it is actually to work with. Throw that it to one side. So this is a 100 pound um, carbon coated wire. This is number one mustard stainless steel crimps. Okay, so all we do, stick it in like that. Turn it around. Now give yourself some um, wire to work with. It's easier if you make it longer. If you make it too short, they're very difficult to actually work. There we go. So there it's gone through. Now to make it shorter in the length we want it to be, and this is going to be for the hook size. Perfect. The hook will fit through there. Absolutely perfect. Take our quarter crimping pliers, and we use what they, on the side it will say small and large. We're using the large one. And I'm not crimping all around the top. I'm using the back part of it and just crimping down on it. So basically what you'll see is the top part is flared open and the bottom part is actually closed. Okay. Now the second part, exactly the same. Stick it through. Pull it down to where you want it to be. So if I want it to be quite a small one like that, that's where I pinch it with my fingers, take the rest of the carbon coated 100 pound, pull it. Now this is gonna be the loop side of it that hooks onto your sinker. And we make it quite big, double the size of what the hook would be. And again, just take our quarter crimping pliers and just slightly more than halfway up. We just crimp, done. Take our trusty side cutters, cut the wire off, like that. Open our heat shrink. Cut off a small section. And just to give you an idea, this one here is 3.2 mil. The small side that goes onto the hook, we stick through and onto the crimp, like so. And then we just take a lighter and we lightly do it. You can use steam from a kettle if you want, but we just use a lighter, it's just quick and easy, it's not going to burn. Okay, so some of my friends prefer to use a hair dryer, they always look good on TV, I don't know why. Um, there we go, so here's the lighter version. And all you do is you just Take it and just roll it slowly in your fingers as it goes. And you can see how quickly the light actually works. Done. There we go. And that's how quick and easy it is to make a wire dangle. Don't forget, all of these are available at most leading tackle stores countrywide. Go out and buy them. I'm just going to show you how to do Kingfisher's Saltwater Sports Trace the one that actually has high density foam on it. So this is a floating one. As you can see over there, you basically get five in a, a um, trace pouch like this. I'm gonna show you how to make them. I'm gonna make a smaller one. Uh, these are just a little bit big for me for my bait clinic that I'm gonna do afterwards. Okay, so very simply, what we require for it, again, is our mustard number one. That's one mole, double sleeve uh, crimps side cutter, my quarter crimping tool, a sharp knife, two crimps, some heat shrink, that's 3.2 mil by the way, a lighter, 
a bit of high density foam, and of course our 100 pound carbon coated wire. So I've already got some ready cut. We're gonna take our double sleeve, our double crimp, our mustard. We're gonna take it through, over, and then back through onto the second part of the actual sleeve, like that. We slide it up to get our hook length right, which is that there. Take our crimp, use the large one for this one. And again, like I say, you don't go all the way to the top. Three quarters of the way to the top, and we just give it a little bit of a crimp so that it flares out the way we want it to be. Second part, we're gonna stop there. We're gonna take some of the high density foam. Cut it to the shape that I want it to be. Okay, there we go. So that's the size, it's a nice square. I'm just gonna trim it down to make it rounder. And of course you can use sandpaper to make it round if you want. But that's pretty much got the shape that I want. It's pretty much the shape that I want. So this is high density foam. As you know, it floats a lot higher than normal foam, than closed cell foam. The nice part about it is if you're making a cob bait, you can insert a rattle. But before I do that, I need to make my hole. And for that, I just need my crocheting needle. Where's my crocheting needle? Okay, so all I do is I get my crochet needle like that. Go straight through the center. All the way down to the bottom. Make sure it comes out. There we go. There we go. Okay, so there you see is a hole all the way through. Put the wire through it. I then get it the second crimp. Take that through. Pull it down. Go through the top. Okay, now. If I want to make it smaller, all I do is I just push the double crimp down and just carry on making it to the size that I want it to be. When I get the size that I want, I just take my crimper and again, just crimp it, cut it off. Okay, so there is pretty much my high density foam to the size that I want as well as the Kingfisher one that's already done for you. Quick and easy this way, takes a bit of playing around with on this one. The nice part about the high density foam is if, like I said before, you're fishing for carb, fishing for grey sharks, you want a bit of noise out there, you can take a rattle and I'll show you how we do it. Let's grab my glass rattle. So there's my glass rattle, doesn't make any noise here. But, the minute I insert it, and again, where the wire goes down it. So all I'm going to do is just insert my rattle into it, like so. And now you've got a high density foam that makes a lot more noise in the water. So fishing for cob, fishing for fish that rely on a lot of sound, noise. There we go. Done. Quick and easy. High density foam works extremely well. There we go, guys. I'll do a cob bait with this one later on. Okay, so if sitting and playing around with high density foam is not your thing and it's very messy, the foam goes everywhere, sanding, it's just dust everywhere. Okay, quick and easy way to do it for long distance casting. And again, I'm just gonna go through everything. Uh, I don't need a knife. Our mustard number one, that's the one millimeter double crimp from mustard. Obviously side cutters, some heat shrink, Lighter, two crimps, 100 pound fish mate carbon coated wire, a crimp, and of course the Kingfisher float. This is a 336 mil float. It's quite a big one. It works extremely well to float up your baits, especially if you're doing chocker baits. Okay, so one of those. And again, we're just going to go through everything. Open it up. 
stick it through. Hook side, once again. Take our crimper. Crimp it, there we go. Take our red float. Stick that one on. Our second one, and like I say, this is more for long distance casting. There we go. And you want to get onto those far banks with a small bait. Okay, so I'm going to make it, keep it nice, small and nice and round. I'm just going to take that there. Easier just if I hold it in the crimper. And I'll pull it to the size that I want it to be. That'll be perfect. Just give it a bit of a crimp. Cut it off. Um, heat shrink again. The heat shrink basically holds the hook in place. I'll we'll show you how we do it when it comes to putting the hook on. Take our heat shrink. Slide it down until it's on top. There we go. Okay, so our heat shrink is on. We then take our lighter and again just lightly melt the heat shrink like that. Okay. So there we go. So there's a nice round um, float for long distance casting. You've got the heat shrink that you can stick through when you put your hook through it. So quick and easy for a long distance casting one. Done. Okay, so now I'm going to do a nylon dangle for you. Very simply, all we need is 1.1 mil um, Kingfisher trace line. And again, this is 1.3 mil. Okay, this is a double sleeve, 1.3 mil, our mustard, lighter, um, 3.2 mil heat shrink, side cutter, or a pair of scissors, it doesn't really make a difference. And I'm just using a bigger, heavier duty crimp, ping pliers, okay? Uh, find the nylon, there's the nylon. Grab ourselves two crimps. The nylon side of it, we stick through. There we go, pull it to the size of the hook that we want. And the smaller you can keep the loop, the less chance you have got of it actually coming off. But the minute you put the heat shrink on it, it doesn't matter, but there we go. So I like to keep it quite small. Take my crimping pliers, crimp it in the center nicely. Second one comes on and back through. You can pull it up to the size that you want it to be, so that's more than ample. Okay. And again, just crimp it. A little bit of heat shrink again. Remember when doing it with nylon, it's always best just put a bit of saliva in there. Bit of moisture. Stick him over and you just slide him down. There we go. Okay. A little bit of saliva just helps to lubricate it. It also helps when you're using a lighter that you don't burn the nylon too much. So let's go. Quick one. Quickly, 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 turn, 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 there we go, done. Okay, so there we go. That is the basic uh, nylon dangle. I'm going to show you three variations of it. That's the first one. The second one, second one, we go on to using a welded arm. The reason we do that is this one over here sometimes starts to fray 
when the sinker is actually applied on it and it actually pulls down and doesn't go back to its original shape. So long distance casting, we start using our solid rings. Let's grab one quickly. This is a size five solid ring, available from the Kingfisher, of course. We go on to opening this again. Grab two of these. Okay, here we go. Straight through. Slide down for the hook. Crimp in the center of it. You'll see it stays flared on both sides. Second chance, second crimp. Don't forget to put your solid ring on. Slide that down, get it to the size or the length that you want it to be. Pull tight. And cut it off. Okay, here we go. Our mustard scissors. Okay, so very quickly, there's one with a solid loop on it, a solid ring. That will release every single time. This one here sometimes actually holds on, so you've got to be very careful. If you don't want to throw far, use this. If you want to throw further, where you're worried about it actually coming off, use that. Now, you can sit there and put foam on it and pack it nice and easily. What I like to do is to use, again, our Kingfisher floats. And this is all about doing variations of it. So there's different ways of doing it. There's so many ways of making dangles out there. I'm just going through it very quickly so you guys can see. Whichever one you want to do, it's up to you. That goes through. That goes through. Let's grab one or two of those. And guys, this is how quick it is to make. You can sit there in front of the TV, get your daughter to help you, your son to help you. It's fun. There we go. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger one because I'm going to do the bait demonstration later on with this. I'm going to use this one quickly. There we go. Okay. So now there's one with flotation on. There's one without flotation one with flotation and now i'm going to show you a swimming one okay okay so pretty much go through the evolution that we've done um straight dangle with nylon quick and easy one with a solid ring for long distance casting a round float uh easier to use throws far it doesn't break down as easy as for instance, your surfboard foam, it's nice, it's hard, long distance casting. And now I'm going to do one which is a swimming dangle. So when you're using things like chocker baits or baits that you want to make move in the water, this is going to be it. So what we require, crimper, a knife, our size 5 solid rings, mustard scissors, 1.1 mil mustard uh, needle line that's it over there by the way i've just cut a piece off two crimps these are 1.3 mil mustard crimps there's the packaging over there so you can see it that's what it looks like some super glue piece of flexible uh, plastic this off cut of one of my trace things that i use my rattler box i've just cut it down a bit and of course, one of our mustard floats. And the reason I'm using this one, it's long, it's thin. I love it. I'm just going to take one out here quickly. In a... They are very easy to, to use. Lovely. It's already formed the way I want it to be. What we have to do first of all, just take off the plastic. There we go. Okay, so we don't need that. So that's basically our flotation over there. 
Let's start off. Step one, take our nylon, the hook side first, take it through. There we go. Now all we do is just pull it down to get the, the right size that we require. Now you can do this with wire if you want. I prefer nylon. Um, the swimming one I use a lot for cob. Down in the Transcar, daylight hours, we are actually get my chocker bait to swim. So there we go. There's the first part of it. Second part, attach your float your um, thing on it. Sorry, we take that part of it. Ooh. Sorry guys, stick that through. That goes through the back. We just force it back into it so it doesn't come off. The top part of that same one, we just go like this, stick it in. Okay, so we've basically got both of those pieces together again. You can use um, glow in the dark uh, beads if you want, it's up to you, it doesn't make a difference. Red or green, the second part. There we go, there's a the solid ring. There we go. Pull that all the way down to where we want it to sit. Pull tight. Crimp. Okay. So there we go. Now, we're that far in our demonstration. Now what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna put the living lip on it. All I do is take my plastic, give it a bit of a cut to the shape I want it to be, and the size. The bigger you make the lip, the more it's gonna move. The smaller you make it, the less it moves around. But that, to me, is absolutely perfect for what I'm trying to achieve. There we go, okay. So now, he's cutting the angle. So all I do is at about a 45 degree angle, take my knife, but I'm not gonna go deep into the actual foam. And we go at an angle like that, there we go. And I'm not going through it either, guys. Have a look at that. That's as much as you need. Okay, done. Now, I take my plastic, slide into it, just make it to where I want it to be, which will be pretty much at that angle there. Okay, so there we go. That's pretty much what I want to do. I put the lip in there. You can see it's quite, quite firm. It's not gonna move around. But to keep it in place, a drop of super glue on each side and it won't come out, I promise you now. Let's get just lined up a little bit more. There we go. Okay. And it doesn't have to be perfectly lined up. It just means it's going to move to either the left hand side a lot more than it does on the right. So it's quite nice. I'm just going to show you again. Just dropping a drop of super glue that side of it. Put it down. There we go, put my glue away. And we'll give it a couple of seconds to dry and that will be my swimming dangle. And I'm gonna show you later on how we actually bait that up for cod. Done. Done. Okay, so now we've got the three dangles. We actually got four dangles. Okay, so the one without anything on it, the standard dangle, the one that we can clip and throw a mile and a half. We've got a floating one with a hard foam on it. And of course, we've got our swimming one. And don't forget, we've got our rattling one. There's our rattling dangle. Now, I'm gonna do the Dacron one. Lot softer, a um, lot more movement. I'm going to show you how we do that one. Let's sort that out. 
Okay, guys, now I'm going to show you how to make a, a simple soft dangle. In other words, a Dacron dangle. 130 pound Dacron that we use. Soft float, optional. You don't have to use it, but I always like to use uh, a bit of flotation in my bait. Um, some number 15 wire doubled. And of course, a number five solid uh, ring, pair of mustard scissors for cutting, and a crochet needle if I do need it. Okay, to start off with, part one. And this is a lot more technical to do. We're gonna take our wire, number 15 wire, number 12 wire, it's up to you. Double it. We just push down on the actual Dacron softening it up a bit, go into it, and depending on how far in I want to go, we just take it out like that, go back around the top part of it, there we go, and we just lightly pull it over. So that there is pretty much where my hook's going to go through. I can make it slightly bigger if I want it to be, just by pulling it out. So there we go. So my hook's going to go through that part of it. I'm just going to take a lighter quickly and just melt this side. There we go. Okay, so that part of it is done. I'm then going to take, again, I can use this, I can use a crochet needle, doesn't make a difference. Through the foam if I want to, but before I do that, I'm just going to form it. I don't like it square, so I'm just going to trim it off a bit. Just makes it a bit rounder. A little bit more aerodynamic as well when it goes through the air, but the bait does the work. You don't have to be too, too fussy about this because the bait's actually going to be the part that's going to be round or more aerodynamic. There we go, looks good. There we go. I'm going to take this now on the length I want it to be. And this is going to go to our solid ring. And we're just splicing the actual um, braid all the way up the top. Take our solid ring, take our solid ring over it, like so. Back through. And we're just going to slide that over the actual braid. Pull it through. Until it becomes tight. There we go. Take our braid scissors, cut it off, pull that into it. So there's basically our dangle made without any flotation on it. The hook's going to go through there, that's going to clip on. It's very soft, very supple. You can throw it a country mile the way it is. But, like I say, we're taking our foam, our float now that we've full. Um, shape to the way we want it to be. Take our crochet needle, take it through, put that through there, pull it over and onto it. Okay, so now there is our, our foam on a soft dangle. And I'll show you how we shape this bait for fishing again, for cob, for sharks, for whatever it might be. Um, preferably not sharks, because obviously it's Dacron, but we use it a lot when the sharks are feeding, the grey sharks are very finicky. I'll show you how to do that afterwards. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to do a wire dangle. Very simple, you can use anything. Number 9 all the way up to number 15. If you go over 15, your fingers are going to be strong. Uh, I'm just going to use number 14 here. This is American fishing wire. 
Now our toothproof wire, there we go. I need a pair of pliers and round nose pliers. Okay. Quick and easy. Haywire twist. Simplest way of doing it. Haywire twist. There we go. So we make a standard loop in it. I'm just going to cut the wire quickly to the length I want it to be. Oh, let's just work at that length. There we go. It's always easier to work with a big piece of wire than a small piece. Okay, so there's our haywire twist starting off and 45 degrees. Very important to keep those pretty much at 45 degrees when you're doing two, three times. You don't need to do more than that. You then take the arm, this tag end part of the arm, and you're going to wrap around four times. There we go. One, two, three, four. There we go. So that's wrapped around four times. Now to break it off, all we do is take this tag end, bend it back to right angles, if you have a look at it there. Grabbing your fingers and you just go backwards on it. There we go. So it breaks off nice and clean. Very simple, very easy. Whatever length you want it to be, let's say you want it to be, and I'll do a short one because I always like smaller dangles, let's make it say that length. There we go. Made the loop. And this is the part that's going to go into your sinker. Around those pliers have a very small area there and a very big area. So it's always better to make it slightly bigger for the sinker part. So you can see it's further down on the actual uh, round nose plier. And then we just do, there we go. Take it out, grab our normal pliers. And again, just three times around. One, two, three. And then we're doing this. 90 degrees, one, two, three. Okay. Now, unfortunately, sometimes the fish pull the bait off. To stop that, all I'm gonna do is just leave a little bit of a, a burr there. So you can either cut it if you want. I like to just do this, just a little trick. Take it like so. Take your side cutters. So I like to leave a little bit of an arm on it. It stops the fish from pulling the bait off. Okay, there we go. Wire dangle, quick and easy. Guys, go out there, make them. They are so easy to make. Another little trick is just to, because you don't like it round, I like it a little bit of a point on it. It just helps the hook to sit a bit better inside it when it's actually on your actual bait. So all we do is we just take a piece of heat shrink, cut it like that, and that's 3.2 mil heat shrink again. Slide it on, take a trusty lighter, there we go, done. Any excess that might be sticking out, you just cut it off. And there we go, guys. Quick and easy. Guys, if you like what you've seen here, don't forget to hit the bell icon. All these traces, all these dangles, sorry, all these dangles that I've made here, I'm going to be doing the bait part of it next week. So stay tuned.